Well, hello again, everybody. This is John Norris at Trading Perspectives. As always, we have our good friend, Sam Clement. Sam, say hello. Hey, John. You doing okay today? Doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. You know, Sam, I've been reading increasingly more and more people, more and more analysts, more and more people who are very brainy Mm -hmm. that are expressing maybe some doubts about the U.S. economy moving forward, particularly if we don't have any sort of additional fiscal stimulus. Yeah, I mean, I I think that's what what most people are starting to see and kind of feel, you know, we felt this big kind of recovery once we, you know, the stock market bottomed, if that's how you want to look at it. And we felt this big boost of energy and stimulus and money coming in, and now it's like, okay, that's gone. What do we do? <laughs> okay, that's over. What yeah, next? But, that was great. But. <laughs> but, but you're absolutely right, because as we all well know, the U.S. economy shrank at a 32% or thereabouts annual clip, annualized clip during the second quarter. We don't have what the third quarter GDP is going to be. However, we can anticipate it being pretty substantial, double yeah. digits, a very yeah. Yeah. healthy rebound, not quite all the way back to where we were. But it will look as though it bounced off the bottom almost in a V yeah. type of situation. But now here we are at, after the end of the third quarter, moving into the fourth quarter. And I don't know, It's maybe I'm, maybe I'm thinking too much. Maybe I'm reading the headlines a little bit too much. Maybe I'm listening to the television a little bit too much. However, it seems as though there might be a little bit of economic exhaustion coming on. Well, I, I think that's pretty easy to see, and I think it's worth kind of zooming out a little bit. You know, like I mentioned, we, we felt this recovery. We, we felt the money coming into the markets, but, you know, we're still at 8% unemployment yeah. when we were at less than 4% before all of this yeah. happened. We are at record low unemployment. And you know it does feel great, but we are still double the unemployment. Yeah. I mean, people would not feel too great about it if, if we had just gone from four to eight percent and a steady downward <laughs> yeah. decline. You think people people don't wouldn't feel good but, about but that? But I feel yeah. like some people are. It's just now kind of hitting them that okay, we have had this great quarter, and we probably are about to have another great quarter when we get the numbers. But we're still not anywhere close, really, in the grand scheme of things. We're still down. What is that? Like eleven million jobs? We're still down a lot of jobs. The unemployment rate is still very very high by historic standards, although it's better than it was. I guess the best thing you can say about the U.S. economy right now is it's better than it was, but then again, it couldn't have gotten much worse, really. Well, that, that's, the, that's the point about it, is it was, I mean, as bad as it's ever been, as sharp of a decline as we've ever seen. And naturally, we, we recover a lot of that when you throw a lot of money at it, but it's like, if that's how we got out of it, and we're kind of, we're kind of you know. Yeah, and I mean, I hear exactly what you're saying. Uh, but my comment about exhaustion, I think, is very real because, you know, during, for, in the CARES Act, the relief package, mm-hmm. all kinds of money being thrown about small business owners helping to prop up, keep people employed, keep doors open at least for a little while, you know, all that good stuff. All that funding is now kind of running out. Yeah. And the what PPP program. Yeah. And, and what we haven't necessarily seen is a huge wave of sort of, oh my gosh, Everyone's declaring bankruptcy. Every everyone's laying off people all at the same time. Uh-huh. It's kind of this is happening today. Yeah. This is happening tomorrow. This is happening the day after tomorrow. The thing with the airlines. I mean, talking about tens of thousands of layoffs if they don't get some sort of additional federal stimulus package. Uh-huh. Talking about the um, you know movie theaters closing down. Was that Regal Cinemas yeah. talking about closing down because uh, because of, uh, because the major movie production companies aren't releasing movies. So that's 45,000 jobs or something along those uh-huh. lines. We're talking about, you know, just some iconic places like Loeb's Boathouse in Central Park, which I've never been able to get in because it's always so so busy. It's kind of iconic. Some of these places are starting to not see a future are starting to really kind of question. And that's where kind of the exhaustion is coming in. At what point do these fits and starts, these drips and drabs, these headline today, these headline tomorrow, they start playing a negative impact on overall investor and business psyche? Well, I, th- I think something that we're getting to the point of is, is maybe we're now in a more traditional type of recession. You know, it is still driven by the virus, but we are maybe in a little bit more you know, just traditional. I mean, we're at 8% unemployment. That may be somewhat more normal for um, for this cycle. But there's there's something that we always see in recessions and that that's weakness feeds off other weakness. Yeah. And and that's the period we're hopefully trying to get out of is this period where we, we see extensive weakness. And I, I think that is a pretty real fear. Um, I, I think that could, it could end up being pretty tragic, which was the actual words of, you know, 
Fed Chairman Jay Powell today is that if we don't get more fiscal stimulus, it could be pretty tragic. Well, tragic is a very strong word, and when a brainy guy like Jerome Powell says it in regards to the U.S. economy, people kind of stand up and take notice. As a matter yeah. of fact, after the chairman's comments, I believe the stock market kind of reverse course for the day. Yeah, and, a little bit and, before uh, and, Trump stuck a fork in it. <laughs> so, uh, but that right there will show you just how kind of fragile maybe investor and business psyche is, where a few comments here or there can cause the markets to do an about face. Because if we're talking about sort of market and uh, business and economic exhaustion, if you will, other people are feeling it as well, mm-hmm. particularly in people in our big media centers, the places like New York, which are seeing huge increases in uh, bank, the business bankruptcies, empty storefronts for maybe the first time ever in Manhattan, vacancy rates in apartments, seeing the same thing out in Los Angeles, and some of our more major population centers. It's kind of hard to not let that kind of stuff seep into your analysis which is what we're starting to see a little bit of. You know, if all the analysis comes out of our major population centers, like in New York, and they're looking out the window and they're seeing, the proverbial window, by the way, Mm -hmm. and they're seeing the restaurants are only sort of open, you know, the the schools are closing back down, um, the neighbor uh, left and it's not coming back, all of that just kind of has a depressing impact on your worldview. And then particularly if you're disseminating investment and economic information around the world Mm -hmm. and you're writing from this negative framework, it could be almost sort of a almost a self-fulfilling prophecy, a death spiral with you will. What happens in New York doesn't necessarily stay in New York. What happens in Los Angeles doesn't necessarily stay in Los Angeles. When I'm driving around Birmingham, Alabama and everything seems pretty well, it's pretty decent. Yeah. There's exhaustion out there somewhere, uh-huh. and it's going to come home to roost, but for or without, I guess a better way of yeah. saying it, some kind of fiscal stimulus. And right now in Washington, we're playing political games while the economy, dare I say, is on a tight wire. Well, I, I think we've seen, uh, we've talked about several times how um, even getting into some more nerdy numbers, things like M2, the velocity of money, it's yeah. just, it, and what the Fed's done, and, and how they can no longer kind of stimulate people to go out and spend money anymore. I mean, they've cut rates to zero pretty much, <laughs> and people still aren't spending money. The the velocity of money, the amount of, you know, times and dollars turned over, yeah. to put in simple forms, is, is still dropping, and, and people aren't spending money, and that's soft demand, and that soft demand in my mind, it makes it harder for us to get some of those more stubborn jobs back. You know, we got some of the easy stuff back. Yeah. And, um, you know, stores kind of opening back up. and But uh, we're still in a period, for all I can see, of really soft demand. And, I, you know, outside of fiscal stimulus, people throwing money at this, I mean, may not be my ideal plan, but it's kind of what has to be done, it looks like. Well, I mean, and you, you've talked about uh, businesses partially reopening, you know, the, the restaurants mm-hmm. and uh, and the bars. And, um, and heck, you don't have to go much further than NFL football or college football or mm-hmm. any of the professional sports. And while I've turned off the TV quite a bit to a lot of that, you know, if all of a sudden there's only 20,000 people in Brian Denny and there's only 20,000 people in Jordan Hare, there's only... 20,000 in Arrowhead Stadium. Mm-hmm. There's only 15,000 in Three Rivers. I mean, that, that, a lot of, that, a lot of those sort of costs are fixed costs that they're having exactly. to pay no matter what. I mean, there is obviously variable costs opening something up, but, you know, you know, rent for restaurants still has to be paid. Yeah. And, and there are a lot of these places in downtown Tuscaloosa, downtown Auburn, downtown Kansas City, wherever Arrowhead is. These bars and restaurants, these businesses that depend on the 100,000 people and the 80,000 people coming to a game, even if it's only seven, eight games a year, you know. Um, oh, yeah, you I'm, jack prices up a little bit, jack you prices get high up, demand, uh-huh. and yeah. that covers a couple months of rent just on one day. <laughs> yeah. But so do you view this as tragic? I mean, that that was Jay Powell's words. As he said, the U.S. faces a tragic risk from doing too little to support the economy. He's talking about fiscally. He's talking about the, the government and another stimulus package because, you know, he may not say this, but he's pretty much done all he can. <laughs> well, he, he pretty much has done all, all he can. I, I'm not exactly. You bloat the balance sheet. You take the overnight rate down to zero to 25 basis points. You can get a negative territory if you want to, but that's proven not to work in the places where they've, where they've tried it. Um, and when I'm t- taking a look at tragic, 
I think a lot of it, and this is where I might be unpopular, and this is where we might be trading perspectives. I think a lot of this has been avoidable, and to a huge degree. And I think it currently is avoidable. You know, I think it. I think it's uh, unfortunate that. Um, the worst economic reports, the worst economic data is coming out of those states with the most draconian economic restrictions on them, mm-hmm. and which also happen to be some of our most populous states, places yeah. like California with a much higher than average unemployment rate, places like New York, and in more particular, New York City, mm-hmm. that has, uh, last I checked, around a 13% unemployment and rate. Shut, shutting you know, schools back down. And- shutting schools back down. And all of this to stave off getting a virus, I'm not trying to be cavalier about this. I'm, I'm really not. It's, I mean, it, it's a thing. I mean, truly. However, is the cure here worse than the disease and if that is that if it is and yet we're still blindly trying to cure the economy cure cure the pandemic by ruining people's economic futures by ruining children's uh, yeah, education. I, I think beyond even economics. I, th- I, th- I think I mean, we're, it, you know we're quantifying the risks of going back yeah, to school and those kids it, passing it on to someone else but in my opinion, I don't think we're fully quantifying the the, the you know, psychological the, yeah. impact. I mean, the depression levels we're seeing in kids going up. I mean, uh, the sociological, psychological, whatever you want to call it, impacts. Um, I don't think we're really quantifying that. And I, I and, and that, that that's that's what scares me. That here we are, we're locking down economies, we're keeping people from living their lives the way that they see fit or would like to see fit. And the thing is, people's Consumption patterns probably will have changed anyhow, but when it's mandated, that's what's frustrating because I think some of this could be avoided, and um, if if it could be avoided, then yeah, it is tragic that we are causing this sort of economic dislocation, potentially negatively impacting millions of children. Mm-hmm. I mean, millions of children, families breaking breaking up, psychological impacts, people in depression. Uh, people drinking more from at home, from what yeah. I understand, a lot of negative stuff's going on here. It's not just people catching a disease that has a relatively low mortality rate. Let's mm-hmm. let's be honest yeah. here. We are, I mean, doing great damage to our society by locking ourselves down. So so we've gotten to this point, and and I think we actually are in agreement on. On that, a lot. One of these days, we're going to have to trade perspectives. One of these days, yeah. but so I think we're on agreement of things could have been differently up until this point. So, but from this point forward, it, with with the cards that we've, you know, I guess been dealt. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you do think it's going to have some pretty tragic impacts if we don't get fiscal stimulus. Into it's the in order to get back to any sort of semblance of normalcy. To anywhere where we can sit there and say, "Well, we've we've saved our economic future, and that for our children and for our grandchildren." And I'm not I'm not trying to be grandiose here, and I'm not trying to be Mr. Worst Case Scenario. That's generally not my nature. But I would say, if we don't get some kind of additional fiscal stimulus to help us through this rough patch, and oh by the way, we have to unfetter the U.S. economy. It's a it's a double edged sword. We can we can keep the economy on lockdown and print as much money as we want. We're just going to have to print more money if you catch my drift. We need to let the U.S. economy go on back to being the U.S. economy, understanding that we are making a bet or we're taking a risk that some additional people might lose their lives. And that's awful. However, right now, I would say, I would say, I would argue the cure is now worse than the disease and and the cure is going to end up killing, ultimately, more people than COVID-19. I agree. I agree, hundred percent. So when Jay Powell calls it tragic, I think it is tragic. Yeah, and when the maybe poli- for different reasons. Yeah, yeah, for di- for different reasons, and, and when the politicians are playing games here before an election with this money, yeah, it's pretty unfortunate. To see. It's 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 pretty tragic. It's pretty when, frustrating. <laughs> yeah, it is. When we have certain politicians, uh, a Newsom, a, a Whitmer, a, a, a Cuomo, uh, just come to mind that are. I dare I say, just kind of ruling with an iron hand. Mm-hmm. I think that's tragic. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a lot of stuff going on here right now that is tragic. The pandemic itself is tragic. The virus is tragic. But even more so than that, it's our officials and our politicians' attempts to do something, yeah, anything, that are causing the more tragic consequences. Yeah. And so there's an old expression, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. 
that's where that's what yeah. I think. <laughs> In hindsight, when we're finally past this, when we're at a new lower standard of living, when we're at a a new normal, which isn't quite as normal as we would like, mm -hmm. that is that could be the epitaph for 2020. Yeah, I think the problem is we're seeing people on both sides of the aisle use something that's actually kind of agreed upon between the, the parts of stimulus that are actually agreed upon as a bargaining chip against the other side. And, and, and there, there's things they agree upon within both of these bills, you know, anywhere from the even the $300 billion to the $2.4 trillion pretty wide gap but some of that money is is agreed upon on, on good uses yet and they're using those both sides are using that as a bargaining chip and that's what stinks because this happened in an even numbered year this yeah. pandemic happened in an even numbered year this happened last year we'd already be on we'd already be on our way yeah if this happened next year we'd oh, already yeah. be, we'd already yeah, be the, the stimulus package or relief package would already be out the door mm -hmm. here we are at 1159 and you know in 2020, trying to talk this, and everyone's playing politics. Yep. Man, it kind of makes your blood boil. A little bit. Well, and then I've also heard that a temperature is part of uh, COVID-19. So. <laughs> so wear your mask? <laughs> got, got to wear my mask. It's not going to keep my blood from boiling on this topic. <laughs> so, guys, thank you all so much for listening. We'd love to hear from you all. So if you have any questions or comments, please let us know. You can always send us an email to tradingperspectives at oakworthcapital.com, where you can leave us a review on the podcast outlet of your choice. If you're interested in hearing more or reading more of what we have to say and how we think, you can check out our blog, Common Sense at oakworthcapital.com, underneath the Thought Leadership tab, along with a lot of other good material. Sam, I'm going to give you the last shot. That's all I got. Well, that's all I've got today, too. Y'all take care.